In over 11 years of training at Foster and Freeman, within document examinations, one of the most frequent questions I've been often been asked is relating to intersecting lines or the sequencing of certain features on a document, such as uh, handwriting and stamps. This has always been an incredibly difficult question to answer, but now we have more tools than ever to help determine the answer to the age-old question of which came first. It is worth noting, however, like in all areas of forensic examinations, these results are the results of a scientific process, and that these tools are there to provide the examiner with as much information as possible so that they may then go on to draw their own expert opinions uh, beyond any reasonable doubt. There may often be times where we simply cannot determine, for example, the order of intersecting lines using tools discussed today, and there may be many factors that may be contributing to this, and we will talk about those during the webinar today. So the first technique that we will be uh, concentrating on is 3D imaging. This was first introduced on our VSE 8000, so it's worth noting again that everything detailed here today is also relevant to the VSC 8000, but we have made some improvements to the hardware and software on the VSC 8000 HS. Essentially, the 3D imaging works by capturing a series of images taken with LED lights at different angles. The different angles of light create shadows and highlights on the surface of the document being imaged. These images are then combined and using advanced mathematical uh, image processing functions, we are then able to generate a 3D image of the surface. In this example, we have two signatures. On the left, the genuine signature, and on the right, the person is disputing the origin of this signature. In this example, we will examine the genuine signature highlighting this point of intersection on the first few letters. To do this, we will click on Tools and then 3D Imaging. It is usually advised to use a higher magnification to get the, the most clear results possible. As instructed, we will check the focus and then click OK. We will give this a name the VSC will then take a series of images under different lighting angles, and then the 3D imaging software will automatically open. Here, we need to select the desired area to process. In the majority of cases, it won't be necessary to select the entire image, so to increase the speed of the final results, we will just select the small point here and then click Generate. Once the results have completed, the screen will look like this. In the middle, you have your 3D image. We can use the mouse wheel to zoom in, and then we can click and drag to spin the image into orientation that we desire. In this case, it should be quite evident that the first line, the much fainter line, was the first line, which has been intersected by this line coming in across the uh, diagonal angle. On the right hand side we have a variety of different tools to try and change the, uh, the, the viewing options and to try and accentuate any differences on, on the point of intersection. One tool that is very useful is we can exaggerate the heights and depths of the surface. We can also invert the image as well and here this can be quite useful to again show how this, this line here has intersected the first line running vertically. We can also change the image color, so we can revert it back to the original image. Or we can have this as a single grayscale image. Or, as the, original, as the image originally started, using these bands. The colors of which highlight the different levels of depth. So the blue are the lowest points on the image, up to red, which are the highest points. You can change and customize these in the options here as well. Instead of moving and rotating the image, we can also simulate moving the light source as well. So of course we are not physically moving any light source, but we can simulate this different uh, orientations using the controls here. We will repeat this process for the disputed signature, again following the same steps as before. Here we have the results for the disputed signature. Again, we can zoom in and have a look at the point of intersection and here we can quite easily see that there is a point where the groove 
of this line here has been intersected by this line. Again, we can adjust some of the controls to try and further highlight this. And because we've already captured our previous result, what we can also do is open up our previous project. And when, then using the various view comparison tools, we can then compare these results side by side. So here we have on the right hand side the original signature where we believe this is the line that has intersected the first line. And here our disputed signature, we can see that it is this, this line here that we believe is the, first, uh, the second line intersecting this one here. So here the results are indicating that the orders are different and therefore the signatures have been written in a different way.